Cardiac information for the VLS provider. Objectives to be covered is the anatomy and physiology of the heart, the basic EKGs, and electrotherapy. The heart is a muscular pump made up of four chambers. The two upper chambers are called atria. The two lower chambers are called ventricles. A natural electrical system causes the heart muscle to contract. This pumps blood through the heart to the lungs and then the rest of the body. The right atrium receives blood from the veins and pumps it to the right ventricle. The right ventricle receives the blood and pumps it to the lungs where it is then loaded with oxygen. The left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs and pumps it into the left ventricle. The left ventricle, or the strongest chamber, pumps this oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. The left ventricle's vigorous contractions create our blood pressure. Depicted here, you can see the blood vessels that actually feed the heart muscle. Many consider the feeding of inside the heart, but it's actually the coronary arteries or the outside of the heart that is actually feeding the muscle tissue. You can see here where if there was a clot here, we'll use red, if there was a clot here, the rest of this tissue down the line would not be able to get oxygen to or from this area. The electrocardiogram, otherwise known as an EKG or ECG, is a test that checks the problems with the electrical activity of your heart. An EKG shows the heart's electrical activity as lines tracing on a paper with spikes and dips on the tracing that are called waves. A recording of the electrical potential is generated by the electrical activity of the heart on the surface of the thorax or on the outside of your chest. It is a tool for diagnosing. The P wave is a record of the electrical activity through the upper heart chambers, so the atria. The QRS is a record of the movement of electrical impulses through the lower heart chambers or the ventricles. There is an ST segment that shows when the ventricle is contracting, but there's no electricity as it's flowing through it. The ST segment usually appears as a straight level line between the QRS and the T wave. The T wave shows when the lower heart chambers are resetting electrically and preparing for their next muscle contraction. You can see here the P wave is that first little blip where it starts in the atria. Then you can see the wide QRS as it travels down through the, the ventricles. And then as the body resets or the heart resets, you can see that T wave. You may have to watch this for a little bit to be able to see exactly where it is on the, the tracing or the EKG. So the P wave, this is the electrical impulse that is traveling through the atria. It is that very first little blip on our electrical tracing. The QRS is the movement electrical impulses through the lower chambers of the heart or the ventricles. It can be wide or it can be narrow, but most of the time it is the widest part of the entire uh, EKG tracing. It's ventricular signals, it's depolarization or the electricity moving, powering it through, and then there is an absolute refractory period, which is a time where when muscles are contracting, they can contract no more. Electricity is moving through and it cannot do any more than it already has. This ST segment shows when the ventric ventricle is contracting, but there's no electricity flowing through it. It's already sent the electrical signal and the muscle is actually contracting. The ST segment usually appears as a straight level line between the QRS and the T wave. It is the end of the absolute refractory period. So the electricity has gone through and it can technically go through again because it is stopped. The T wave shows repolarization or basically a resetting of your 
ventricles. It is relative refractory, which means that, yes, your ventricles have squeezed and they've contracted, and technically they can probably start retract, um, contracting again, but they're not nearly as strong. They must reset electrically and mechanically to prepare for their ne next muscle contraction. So here we put it all together, P, Q, R, S, T. Top of the heart, P, bottom of the heart, Q, R, S, as it resets, T. Here's another example of how to interpret the P, Q, R, S, T. The P wave activation of the atria, the Q, R, S or activation of the ventricles, and the T wave is the recovery. We can see on the charts there on the right, the difference between a normal heartbeat, one that appears fast, one that appears slow, and then one that is irregular. And you can see where some beats are closer than others. Now to actually place the leads to where you can get an EKG reading. It is extremely important to know the exact placement of each electrode on the patient. Incorrect placement can lead to a false diagnosis or negative changes in the EKG. If you remember white on right, smoke over fire, and clouds over grass, you'll be able to place the white on the upper right shoulder or clavicle area of the patient. Smoke will be on the left arm because it will be over fire, which is red, which will be on the left leg, and clouds, which are white, will be over grass, which is green. Some of the leads do not have that fourth green. Some of them only have the white, black, and red. Some providers remember a salt, pepper, ketchup relish. Right always means the patient right. So white on right, smoke over fire, clouds over grass. Most of the time at the BLS level, the EKG will tell you whether it's just too fast, too slow, or not at all. You must glance and see whether the rhythm on the monitor and the pulse match. Then you can consider if it's too fast, too slow, or not at all. Any of those three, you may need to intervene. If it is regular, hold the EKG to the light and see if it makes a pattern. Some can be irregularly regular. Is there a P wave for each QRS? A normal QRS complex measures 0, 0, 006 to 0, 1, 2 seconds, which is one, to five, one and a half to three small boxes on the EKG strip. When you measure the QRS, you start by measuring at the end of the PR interval. So P all the way that straight line to the R. So you look at your rate. Too fast, too slow, not at all. You look at the regularity. Is it regular? Is it irregular? You look at those P waves or that small bump. You look to see if it's regular. You look to see if there's one for every QRS. And you look at the speed. Then you look at your QRS or the big bump. You want to see how wide it is. Is it three boxes? Is it more than three boxes? And is it regular? Knowing whether it's a more than three boxes or less than three boxes will determine where in the heart this signal is generating from. You can count the pulses. You can look at the monitor and see what the monitor tells you for a pulse. There's also different techniques for counting using the strip of paper when it's printed. The regular R to R method works great if the rhythm is regular. Essentially, you count six seconds, then you times that by 10. Work smarter and not harder. So you can use the EKG monitor to show you what the, the rate is, and then you confirm with palpation. Does the electricity match up with mechanical compression?
In normal sinus, there is a P wave for every QRS. It is regular and it ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. This is the normal rhythm of the heart. The electrical impulse originates with the SA node or the sinal atria node, it's in the atrium, and it travels through the atria to the AV node, think atrial ventricular node. After a brief delay, the impulse travels down the bundle branches to the, the ventricles. This is where you get your P, that pause, the QRS. So normal heart rate from 60 to 100 beats per minute, and the electrical impulse originates in the SA node. You get a normal P wave. In sinus tach, tachy meaning fast, there's a P wave for every QRS. It's regular, but it's going to be over 100 beats a minute. So tachy just meaning fast and cardia meaning hard. Sinus saying that it's in the SA node. So sinus, tachy, cardia. Sinus generation, and it's a fast heart. Sinus bradycardia, sinus meaning it's generating in the, in the SA node or sinus atrial node. Brady means slow and cardia means heart. So it starts in the SA node, but it's slow heart. These rates are usually 40 to 60 beats per minute. It's usually regular. The P wave is normal. The QRS is less than three boxes. It's just slow. Irregularly irregular or AFib. When something fibrillates, it's very random and kind of quivering. There's no discernible P waves, or we can't tell what's a P wave and what's not. There is some with every QRS, but the QRS is not wide. You notice it's not more than three boxes, it's less than three boxes. Here it's just a little over one box. So the P wave is irregular. Basically, the atria beats out of sync with the ventricles. Your atria may be fire, 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 ventricle. Atria, 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 ventricle. Um, but it's never, not really going to be a pattern like that. If you can tell here, this one, that wide, and you got really wide. You got some here that are really close. Uh, so there's different patterns. It doesn't line up. You don't see anything that can distinguish this pattern. Regularly irregular is some sort of pattern. This is known as a flutter. So there's P waves, but there's going to be multiple. Each one of these little spiky things is a P wave. So P, 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 QRS. P, 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 QRS. So you can see how there's a pattern. It's usually a fast rate, 250 to 350 beats per minute for the atria. So we count, that's a lot in there. There's four just in this thing here. Um, but the ventricle is much slower. So we talked earlier about the R to R. So this is a six second strip. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The ventricles are going at about 70 beats a minute. The atria, let's see here, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 280 beats per minute. Ish. We can't tell if this is a T wave, a P wave, or the both of them together. So the atria is going significantly faster. But this has a pattern. It's irregular, but it's a patterned irregularity or a regular irregular. Here we have ventricular tachycardia. So fast heart, but this one stems from the ventricles instead of from the sinus or the atria. It can be polymorphic, which means many shape, or it can be monomorphic, which is singular or, or one shape. The rhythm can be regular or irregular. The rate is usually very fast, over 100, even up to close to 300 beats per minute. You see on the left how it's coming from one area of the ventricle. It's just beating over and over and over. You also see that it is monomorphic in shape. It's coming from one area, so it's got one look. 
The one on the right is coming from different areas of the ventricle. You can see where it's fire, 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 all different places in the right ventricle as well as the left ventricle. So you're getting different shapes of your QRS. QRS is typically wide, three boxes or more. You can't see any P waves because they're covered up or non-existent from your the rest of your rhythm. You can't see any of the P waves. This is not a healthy heart, and this person may be in very serious, life-threatening uh, arrhythmia at this time. Torsades du points, a French term that literally means twisting of the points, is a lethal form of ventricular tachycardia. It's named for its hallmark feature, the polymorphic QRS complexes that appear to twist around that line. It can be regular or irregular and they may have a pulse, but it's not going to last very long. So you notice how it is polymorphic, so many shapes, and it is very irregular. Here's that key word again, fibrillation. Essentially, it's just quivering. It could be highly, highly irregular and very, very fast, 350 beats per minute, but it's not actually beating. There will be no pulse with this. It's unmeasurable. There will be no P waves. There's not going to be any PR intervals. There's no actual discernible QRS. It is essentially just a very quivering heart firing in every part of the heart. This here is another VFib video. I'm not sure if you're able to see it. Um, you can see the heart tissue. Um, it's a few minutes long. It's going to show you the rhythm on the monitor there. You can see that that is V-fib. It's very irregular. We can't tell if those are P waves, QRSs, what's going on. Uh, there will not be a pulse. And you can see the heart there, quiver, quiver, quivering. It's all over the place, quivering. They have electrodes placed on the outside of it, and they just defibrillated. Now you can see a more regular rhythm squeezing of the heart. shock therapy or electrotherapy points we're going to cover is defibrillation cardioversion and pacing defibrillation this is a sequence this sequence is structured around two minute periods of cpr during which the rest of the team should be preparing for the next step in the process if it has not been done already activate the emergency response system and continue the bls sequence you need to establish an airway and provide oxygen if available. You're going to connect the patient to cardiac and blood pressure monitors when they're available. If the patient is in a systole or PEA on the monitor, they will not have a shockable rhythm. If the patient is in ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, the AUD will want to defibrillate. You're going to immediately apply the pads and shock the patient. You're going to continue CPR for two minutes while establishing IV or IO axis is if, if available. And if the patient is still in VTAC or VFib, you will shock again after the two minutes. You're going to continue CPR for another two minutes. ALS providers may administer epinephrine or other medications. Defibrillation is for a shockable rhythm in CPR as it gets defibrillated. You're going to follow the AED prompts. A shockable rhythm has electricity. You saw in the previous video that there was some mu muscle movement with this electricity. If it's strictly electricity and no muscle movement, no matter what you do with the electricity, it is no longer connected to the muscle tissue. You have to have that connection. What you're essentially doing with de defibrillation is you were stopping the rhythm so the heart can generate its own rate again. We learned at the beginning of this class that the P wave is started from the sinus atrial node, the SA node. It has its own little pacemaker, and if you stop this bizarre fibrillation or tachycardia, hopefully the SA node will start generating a regular 60 to 100 beats per minute rhythm. Synchronized cardioversion is when the heart rate is too fast. You need to consider placing pads on the chest. 
This is more often an, an ALS provider level of care, but at the BLS level, you can recognize when a patient's heart rate is too fast. They're unable to maintain a good blood pressure and they may become shocky. The EMT 2, 3, or paramedic can then slow the heart rate down using this electrotherapy. Transcutaneous pacing. Trans being through, cutaneous is your skin, and pacing would be like a pace car or controls the rate. This is when the heart rate is too slow. Consider placing pads on the chest. They're increasing the voltage here, the power that the pads are going to generate. He'll start to have a sense feeling the electricity in his chest. There you can see, if you look closely, his hands and chest start to move with each of those pulses from the electricity. He'll start getting muscle contraction in the heart as well as through the top layer of the body. This here shows what happens when you, a person gets taken to the cath lab. At the beginning we showed where there could be a block. In this you can see where it's nice and thick and then there's an area here that is very thin. You can't see any blood going through it. It's essentially blocked. Go ahead and look at that a little closer and longer. You can see where somebody might not be getting very good blood flow from their heart or to their heart because of a clot. In summation, an EKG is a tracing of the heart's electrical activity. We can follow where the electrical impulse starts from the atria and travels down into the ventricles and then repolarizes. If there is a medical condition that is stopping the electrical impulse or, cr or creating too many electrical impulses, we'll be able to read it from the EKG. The heart cells or myocytes generate their own electrical activity. They have automaticity. This is why there can be multiple areas that are firing in different areas of the heart. You can have multiple areas in the atria causing a fib or a flutter. You can have multiple areas of the ventricles firing causing ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Interpretation of EKGs, you're gonna look at the rate. You're gonna look at whether it's 60 to 100 
faster than 100, lower than 60. You're going to look to see if it's regular or irregular. You're going to look at your P waves. Do the P waves match your QRSs? Is the QRS narrow or is the QRS wide? We defibrillate V-fib and V-tac. The videos showed movement in the ventricles and in the entire heart and there was electrical activity. We need to stop that irregular activity, that ir irregular electrical impulses, so that the automaticity can start again in the correct rhythm and rate. We can also cardiovert fast rhythms to slow them down. You can also pace slow rhythms to make them faster. These other electrotherapies are for advanced level providers, but recognizing when somebody's heart rate is too fast and they're becoming shocky, you can get uh, defibrillation pads ready for your ALS providers. Having one drug available, epinephrine for cardiac arrest is also key. If you are in a cardiac arrest situation, making sure that you have epinephrine available for your ALS providers is going to be essential for providing medication to your cardiac arrest patient. Sources used to make this presentation.